welcome to workshop number two of series three. Can you believe it's been three series of Heart at Home with myself, Rachel Hare. I hope, hope you all enjoyed last week's tune, which was of course the Robert Burns tune, What Can a Young Lassie? And in today actually, when this is premiering, this is Burns night, so perhaps you might be in practice it. You're maybe going to give it a play tonight at your virtual burn supper. So yes, um, I did some great feedback about that tune. So thank you as ever. Now, remember to sign up to the mailing list if you'd like a reminder about these workshops. And of course, please do subscribe to the YouTube page, which is the wee buttons down there. Um, and if you could like the Facebook page, that would be a great help as well. And if you fancy sharing um, the news about Harp at Home, every week, of course, on Facebook, there is a wee video which um, previews the tune that we're learning. So it's a good place to go, actually, if you just want to hear the, the actual tune that we're about to learn. Um, but if you fancy sharing that around your harpy pals, I'd be really grateful. So, today's workshop, we're going to learn a reel from Shetland. And to begin the workshop, we're going to have a wee chat with a fantastic Shetland fiddle player. And he's, he's up in Shetland just now. So let's get him on the Zoom call and I will ring up Mr. Ross Cooper. Okay, so um, hello everybody. I am thrilled to have an yet another guest with me here at Harp at Home. We have Ross Cooper, the fiddle player. And Ross, you're away in Sh you're up in Shetland just now? I'm in Shetland, yeah. I'm from Shetland and that's where I'm at at the moment with my fiance and my mum. We're all in the same house. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Shetland is the most northerly group of islands in Scotland. So we're right up 200 miles north of Aberdeen and uh, I'm at currently in Lerwick, which is the capital of Shetland. So that's where we're at. I'm from a I'm from a place called Vaux, which is about 18 miles north of here. But, but. Ah, cool. I've only been to Shetland once. Um, frustratingly, I spent, well, no, it was a really good time. I spent five days there doing a wee mini tour around actually care homes and things, which oh, was yeah. great. Yeah. But frustratingly, I arrived two days after the festival, the famous Shetland Folk Festival. So literally oh, oh. everybody I met said, oh, if you'd only been here two days earlier, I was like, I know, I know, oh, I know. That's really sore. That's really sore. I know. Sore. And the house that I was staying in, I had a friend who let me stay in their house and it also overlooked um, the festival club venue, which was... Oh, gee, was. <laughs> so, yeah, the the Shetland Folk Festival is kind of world-renowned, actually. Great acts that come up every year and the sessions are pretty good there. A very special festival um, for for everyone young and uh, young and old and when we were growing up it was one of the main ways that we would see acts from all over the world in the flesh so it was like a, a great education as well as a great party and a great uh, sort of being exposed to these uh, new ways of doing things and different types of music and yeah it was and just just about your own playing so you're a fiddle player when did you start playing and how did how did you start playing fiddle well, I started playing the fiddle, I started getting lessons when I was around seven, I think, and uh, I started with a lady called Bernadette Porter <clears throat> in the Bray School. Mm -hmm. Bray is just uh, near where I'm from. And uh, so I got her for a small while and then I uh, moved to the town, Lerwick, moved to that school, I should say. And uh, my mum taught me from then. So, but the reason I started playing, I don't know, if, does anybody have a reason? But it's just, we, fiddle playing has been handed down in my family for generations. So, like, my mum learned from her dad and he learned from his dad and uh, so on and so forth. It goes back. And uh, so we learned from mum. So, like, me and my brother both play the fiddle and Marianne my sister she can get a tune out of the fiddle but she's mainly a piano player and Ryan nowadays is mainly a guitarist but I was uh, the fiddle's always been the first instrument for me I played guitar and used to play the drums and stuff but mainly mainly the fiddle and yeah I've been playing it what does that make it something like oh I don't know 25 years or something that's maths Ross you don't want to do maths it's <laughs> not do that and like fiddle fiddle playing like that's really the instrument that folk kind of associate most with Shetland am I right in thinking yeah if we if we were a nation it would be our national in uh, instrument I suppose like Sweden's got the nickel harper sorry I just got an email sorry oh, that's okay don't worry um, 
So yes, uh, if if we uh, it would be our national instrument, the fiddle, for absolute sure. Yeah. yeah. Here. Brilliant Shetland fiddlers, and we've as part of our poem, we've done quite a lot of fiddle music. Actually, we've played tunes from the from the northeast, learnt a few Skinner tunes and things like that, and yeah. played some tunes from the Highlands as well. And like, I what makes can I dare 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 you ask you what makes Shetland fiddle playing a little bit different, or the style Shetland music compared to these? Styles, did you say? Well, I think it's because, I mean, we have a lot of Scottish influence in our music these days, but we still hold on a little bit to some of that Scandinavian influence in our music because that's, we used to belong to Norway, you see. So, uh, like, we don't, in Shetland, there'll be people out there probably that don't know that in Shetland we don't wear kilts and we don't speak Gaelic. But we are Scottish and we are in the north, you know what I mean? But it's uh, but it's a more of a, a Scandinavian heritage if we go back far enough. So there's lots of like ringing strings and there's a couple of different tunings of the fiddle. If, you, if you're doing proper trad stuff, like um, we would tune sometimes the G and the D string up to an A and E. So you get A, E, A, E. And that gives you a great resonance. And that was really helpful in traditional Shetland fiddle playing when uh people used to play for dances because it would just be one fiddle player playing for a dance and maybe uh it would not i suppose necessarily be a hall like we know halls now but it would be like a, a packed room anyway full of people dancing and that getting that volume on the fiddle was was uh was sort of quite important and so that that different tunings kind of helped with that but it really came from scandinavia that stuff and we also have like things like descriptive tunes ceremonial tunes and stuff like that which are like there's a few tunes that are like spinning tunes i suppose and that like uh emulate the the spinning wheel and so they have a really pushy pulley kind of rhythm and they're not like square for dancing but uh but the dancing really was a big thing that shaped shetland fiddle music and lots of ringing springs and yeah. quite fast i suppose sometimes yeah that's fantastic and there, re- there really are some great shetland fiddlers including yourself and you've been quite busy over the past year despite a uh, kind of being up in shetland and despite like many of us not having any gigs really you've been well both for your both for your family and um and for you your mum has been yeah she had quite some good news in the last year didn't she Oh yeah, okay, so yeah, my mom uh, received an MBE, so I have to call her mom MBE now. <laughs> but no, no, not really. But um, she, yeah, she got an MBE for her services to, I guess, Shetland and Scottish fiddle music, because she spent her whole life teaching people and and uh, performing, and uh, both on the fiddle and the piano, playing for dances, weddings, festivals. Uh, and and tutoring some really amazing fiddle players from beginning to yeah. school. She's great. She's great. So, I talked with her once, so it's it's nice that the Queen has recognised her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mental. Yeah. Totally. Um, and you've got a new album out as well, which I have to say is really rather good. It's been keeping me going in my running actually. It's like oh, I've got yeah. one of it on my playlist for my running. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, me and my brother recorded an album. Just something that we've been speaking about doing for a lot of years. And uh, it's kind of strangely the lockdown thing sort of provided us with the time to do it. And, and also Mariel uh, Recording Studios. Mariel uh, is a music venue here in Lerwick, for anybody that doesn't know. And they also have a studio. And uh, the lovely Tim Matthew, who some people might know from Mystery Juice and is also a sound engineer for the band Lau and vet lots of bands. He's worked with me with the Pete Bog Fairies and stuff like that as well. And he runs the studio there and they kind of did a bit of an experiment to see if we could record like COVID safe. So whatever we weren't playing, we were masked up and staying at a distance and everything. And, and when we were in the room recording, me and my brother were at opposite corners, but we could, you know, we could just play towards each other. And it was, it was lovely. Yeah. Uh, years, sort of, I guess, years in the making and then like uh, three days in the studio and then that was that. But I mean, we had to mix it and everything, but but yeah. it was it was kind of quite fast uh, getting it together. But it we're really hard. happy. With it. We're really three happy. days in the studio is not bad for tracking. Like, yeah, that was it. Yeah, thirteen tracks, and we had we had a rehearsal where we decided what we were going to play, and then we had a rehearsal where we arranged it, 
a bit and then <laughs> we, uh, went into the studio so it's a kind of a benefit of playing it lo- along with your brother who you've played along with for your whole life you can kind of and we're super bad for pushing things like that but uh anyway it was came out nicely i think so amazing well listen i'll put make sure i'll put a link uh, to that in the comments and everything so that everyone can look it up and uh, purchase it or download it or whatever it's yeah amazing. and ross i think you're going to play as a wee set of tunes so yeah thank you very much for playing for us and for having a wee chat to us and just letting us know about life in shetland and about shetland fiddling no problem i'll get on with some tunes then out Okay, here's a great Shetland tune card. Lucky can do link on it. Huge thank you to Ross for playing his action there and it was it was really nice to have a blather with him up in Shetland. It's been a while since I've seen him and yeah he's he really knows his stuff about Shetland fiddle playing and it's just great that he really does come from that kind of long line of tradition f- traditional fiddle players so yeah great to have a wee chat to him. Do of course check out his album with his brother. I will put the comments in the YouTube um, a kind of wee box underneath the video and of course there will be a link on your pdf on your sheet music which reminds me um please do consider buying the sheet music for today's tune of course which is at harpathome.com it's available for instant download and once you download that you will see that today's tune is a shetland reel called more grog coming now Grog, I for a while thought that that was like food. I don't know, it kind of makes me think of like porridge for some reason. Um, But grog actually is the kind of word for the kind of daily drinks that the sailors would have in the Navy. It was a a kind of proportion of, I think it was like um, one part rum to four parts water. And that was their rations. They would get it twice a day in the Navy. So this tune, um, I first heard um, on a recording by the School of Scottish Studies in Edinburgh part of Edinburgh University. They do they do great work researching tunes and researching traditions and they um, have always gone out into the field and recorded people um, both singing and playing the music of Scotland and actually telling stories about Scottish life. So they've done this for a very long time and this tune um, was recorded up in the island of Unst, so the most further, furtherly north island of the Shetland Isles a long way away from where I am in Glasgow, just now I have to say. And yeah, I heard it and I thought, ah, hi, I think that might sound pretty good in the heart. So taking the time to arrange it for you. Um, Yeah, I will play it to you now and then we'll head over to the green screen. So here we are. This is more grog coming. So there we go, Shetland Reel. We'll see how we got on with it. You'll have noticed as well there's an extra tune in your PDF. More about that later. But for just now, let's head over to the green screen.
Welcome to the Rachel Here Green Screen and we are going to learn this cracking Shetland reel called More Grog Coming. So if you've got the sheet music you will realise that there are quite specific instructions relating to the levers that we need to set to this tune. This tune is kind of wobbles between the first part is in D major, second part is in more of a kind of modal kind of sound. It has the flattened seventh in it. So that essentially means we have C sharps and C naturals in this tune. So levers wise, if you're like me and you're in E flat major, you'll have your E's, your A's and your B's on. You also have your F sharps on and now put your C sharps on, okay? So put your whole harp into D major. So E's, A's, B's, F's and C's. If you're in C major, that means just F sharps and C sharps. But for this tune, you also need a C natural on middle C, okay? So put that lever down. For the purpose of the left hand, we're gonna have C naturals as well. So bottom three notes from C natural down, or from middle C down are natural. And then your top C is sharp. And yeah, that should be you all set up for this tune. So first off, I'm going to take you through a little bit of a kind of trickier bit of the tune. We have a triplet in this, um, a wee kind of fancy kind of thing. Triplet means three of the same notes. And in fact, we have the same note before that. So we have four notes in a row. Have a listen to this little bit. So this little triplet, okay, this might catch you out a little bit. We're going to have a look at that first. Thumb on E, third on C. Now you could use your second. I like to use my third finger because it's nice and strong. We're going to have our thumb on E, third on middle C. So that's that C natural in. This part comes in in the second part of the tune actually. We're going to play our thumb, our C. And for just now, because I'm going to be nice to you just now, pop your thumb back onto the E to uh, anchor it. Okay, that's just going to keep you steady. Now you're not unfortunately able to do this in the tune, but we'll do this for this exercise just so that you can get used to the fact that after that you're going to go four, three, two. So you're kind of brushing down. You're not waiting until these fingers come in individually, four, three, two, pulling into the hand. You're kind of striking it like a wave, I guess. Kind of four, three, two. Do you see how my fingers are going? So they're not going, um, in, in, in. They're kind of going, they're following each other in a line. Okay, so see how you get on with that. You might have used that decoration before. It's a feature in a lot of Scottish tunes. I am going to give you an option though um, for making it a little bit easier. But I would like you to build up to that. Okay, so it's just a little bit that you can practice just now. Now, let's go for this tune. I'm going to tell you now. Um, that um, it's kind of a, it's quite a fast tune, so it's maybe a good idea to learn the first part and then come back, or learn the first part and the second part, the melody. Get that under your fingers first. Really play through it lots and lots and lots. It's what I did with this tune, um, so that's in your muscle memory. Then maybe come back and later learn the left hand. I encourage you to watch all of the workshop just started so that you at least have an understanding of what you're going to be aiming for, for the, with the left hand. But really do kind of come back later and work on that left hand by itself. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to play you the first part twice. I'm going to play it at a nice steady pace and yeah, we'll get learning it. Okay, so as you may have realised by me playing that through that twice, um, it does repeat, but there's not much repetition or there's there's no repetition actually in the whole of that first part, okay? So this isn't kind of following the usual structure that we're familiar with, and to be honest, the whole tune is a little bit like that, but do not worry, it is only an eight bar and eight measure tune, so you've not got lots of stuff to learn. It's kind of a condensed tune, I guess, but there's not much repetition in that. So we're starting off with this little bit. Have a listen. Okay, this is the start of the first phrase and we've got a scale pattern. We're going to start with our fourth in A, third in B, second in C, thumb in D. So four in a row. We're going to play up those four. Then we're going to add on the next three notes, the E, F and G. So we're going to go up them 
cross under with our third onto E, place on up EFG. So we're playing every note from A to G. Four fingers cross under to three. Have a listen again. Can we try that together after three? Two, three. Place them on again. Let's go for that again. After three. Two, three. Nice work. Okay, I'm going to add on some more notes. I'm going to start to come down, but I'm going to miss out this D. Have a listen. Did you see what happened? So we've got a scale bit. I'm going to turn around at the top as I'm playing that G. I place on F, E, and C, no D. So I'm going down four, but missing out the D. Okay, let's see if we can add those on. We'll do it even slower. Two, three. And add those three notes on. So you go four down four in a row. Only one at the thumb at the top, only one G. Let's go for that. That's our first phrase already. Two, three. One more time. Two, three. You're getting good with using your fourth fingers in this tune, I have to say. Lovely. Our next phrase, our second phrase, is kind of built round a D triad. Have a listen. So I'm starting off on my second finger because we've kind of ended on that C and it's easy to swap your second on and your thumb onto the F. Think about this, D triad notes, D, F and E. These are the only notes you're going to use. You're going to go D, F. And at that point, actually, I should show you, I like to swap my third finger over now. And I'm going to go D, A, D, F, D. So I think they call that pattern Alberti bass, if I think back to my uh, music concepts at school. <laughs> so... We're playing D's in between each of those notes. So second on D, thumb on F. We're going to go D, F. Third on D now, D, A. D, F. And end in the D. Let's try it together. Four, three, four. So all notes from a D triad. Starting in a D, finishing in a D. D's between every note, really. After four. Three, four. Nice. And again, second on the first one, third on the other ones. I think I stuck in an extra second there. But that's what you're aiming for. Okay, let's see if we can add it on with our first phrase. After three. Two, three. And D triad section. Cool. Let's go around it a few more times. Two, three. Nice. One more time. Two, three. Listen to the next bit. So this is the third phrase and fourth phrase combined. So I'm going to start off with the third phrase. Second on F, thumb on G. We're going to play that F. Then we're going to come down three from G, missing out the E. But I want you to play the E at the end. So I'm going to go down F, D, thumb on E. So second on F, played down G, F, D, missing out that E. Remember, always look for these patterns. Thumb on E. Let's try that together after four. Three, four. 
Finish on thumb and E. Good, again. Three, four. One more time for good luck. It's our third phrase. Three, four. Nice, new position, C, E, F and A. That's kind of a shape. I know some harp players have names for shapes for things. Could be a seagull that? I don't know, I might be making that up. <laughs> um, C, E, F and A. So we've got string, this is string, two strings, this strings, strings. That's kind of a pattern. We're gonna go up that and then down five notes. So C, E, F, thumb and A. Up those four, so we've got four, three, two, one, again using our fourth finger. We're going up. Now we're going to come down five, so one and two. We're going to cross our thumb over in a second to the F. Cross thumb over to the F and down we go another three notes to make that up to five. Let's see that. Um, I will count to three for this. Two, three and four. So it starts on the and of after three. Two, three, and. So C, E, F, thumb and top A. Two, three. One, two, and down another three. Another three notes there. Phew, well done. So when we put that third and fourth phrase together, it will sound like this. So we're always trying to keep connected to the harp. So as you play the end of that third phrase, when your thumb's playing the E, pop your fourth finger on, ready to place up those four notes, yeah? It's all about kind of staying connected to the harp, especially in fast reels. It's really good if you can keep a finger on the harp. Okay, let's try that third and fourth phrase together then. Connect them up. After four, three, four. again so f g f d e after four three four good one more time three four Good work. Okay, so do you remember your first and second phrase? First phrase was we were just going up the scale to the G. Coming down and missing out the D. Then you use the D lots here because you've got your D triad part. Popping about with Ds in between. And then it links on to our third and fourth phrase. Okay, let's see if we can do it all together. You ready? We'll just play it straight through all those phrases. That's all of your first part. That's good work. Two, three. So you want to your third phrase. Good. Let's go for it again. Just one through like that. Two. Three, four. Good, okay, let's see if we can go for it then. All of it, are you ready? Two, three. Twice through. And it just repeats straight away. 
So stretch your fourth out. Four and a one. Good, nice work. Okay, so remember pause, rewind if you want to play that along with me a few times. Okay, I'm going to play you the second part and that's where this uh, triplet comes in that we were kind of working at the start of the, of the workshop at. Have a listen. slow actually and um, we're gonna go down five notes here thumb and B second and A we're gonna play our B A cross over to G F and D you're missing out the E here so B A crossover onto one two three on G F and D and we're gonna go straight down those the count will go like this three four Try it together after four. So the B comes in the and after the four, before the first few of the bars that pick up. Three, four, and one, and two, and. Let's go for it again. Three, four. Good. Thumb onto E that you missed out there. Okay, so try and connect that up. That's the note that you missed out. Thumb straight onto E. And this is where we're going to do our triplet that we were practicing earlier. Thumb on E. Now, you can't, I'd, what I want you to do is, if you're going to use a note to steady as you're playing that triplet, put your thumb onto the F and then go 4, 3, 2. I'm a little bit messy on that myself, I have to say. There we go. E, C, thumb onto F to anchor. Four, three, two for that triplet on the C. So that's all in the C's. Thumb on E, third and C. Move your thumb to F as you're playing the C and triplet on the C. Nice. Let's count to two to, to try that together. One, two. Nice, again. One, two. Good. Let's add that in. I'm going to count to four. Three, four. Nice. Go for it again. Three, four. Okay, so that's got that C natural in. So already we've kind of changed the colour of this piece. Okay, so your thumb is on F. And that is because the next bit is also going to be based around a D triad, but it's going to be in a little bit of a different order. Have a listen. Okay, so thumb was anchored on the F. We're going to play our third, or D with the third, sorry. D, F, D, A. So thumb moves up to the A. So D, F, D, F, D, A. Let's try it together after four. Three, four. Third, back onto D and straight up that D triad. Okay, so let's try it together. So we're adding on a D triad playing up. Three, four. D, F. D, A. Up the D triad. Let's go for it again. Three, four. Stay in those notes up there, okay? 
come back onto A. Now I know I'm breaking my own rules here. A lot of times in jigs and reels, if it's fast, I usually get you to change a note, change fingers if it's a double note. It's really hard. I've been looking at the fingering at this one and I can't really see a better op option. You could, I mean, you could use your third finger, but that's just, and it doesn't work. So we're gonna play, we're gonna use our thumb once, okay? It's really the only option. And you've just got to kind of balance up if it's, you know, if your option that means you don't use the same finger twice is just completely bonkers and it means your rest of it isn't gonna flow. Sometimes you just got to use that finger again. So we've just come up the D triad here. Thumb back onto A, second on, uh, no, not second on F. So thumb back onto A, we're gonna do an A and two Fs and we are gonna change the fingers on the Fs. So we're going to use one on A, third on F, A, and then second on F again. So one and two, and then your A again. So A, F, A. Let's try it together. Three, four. And again. Three, four. Good. on E, F, G and A. So you're playing up four here. We're going to go up four from E to A and we're going to come all the way back down to D. So we're going to have to work out a first fingering here. We're going to go up four. We're going to cross over and pop your thumb on the F on the way down. So we have up four, down five. Crossing your thumb onto the F. So up four, down, well it's a grouping of two and then a grouping of three. I'm going to count to two to get that. That E lasts for a full beat. One, two, three, four and one. Cool, let's try it again. All four on. Hope you're still with me after two. One, two. add on the bit before the A, F, F, A, then all on four, okay? A after four. Three, four. Go for it again. After four. Three, four. So, just to go over that second part, you're going down five but missing out the E. Then we have our triplet part. Remember, thumb anchored on the F. D, F, D, A. Up a D triad. The bit we've just done. All four on. See how it goes. Remember, you can pause, rewind, rewatch if you need to. After four, three, four. again to be sure. After four. Three, four.
Okay, we go from the start. So each part goes twice. We'll see if we can do the whole tune twice because it's over quite fast. So remember your first part to revise, you were going up from A to G and then came down but missing out the D. Playing on the D triad. Then we had F down from G missing out the E but playing it at the end. Ending phrase was up C, E, F, A and down five at the end. Yeah, okay. Let's see how we go. Let's go for the whole tune, all the melody, each part twice and the whole tune twice. After three, two, three. said this earlier and um, you can go you can just play to C's instead okay to until you're kind of used to that so have a go at that or you could go in fact you can even just play one C so it's gonna go one three two down I'll write that in the music so instead of going E C and another three C's you're just gonna do E C play your second finger with the C and then you're on. Okay, cool. So have a go at that. Um, sorry, I was going to play it twice there. Um, let's play it again, but this time I'm going to add in the left hand so that you can hear what it goes like and then we'll start to work on that. So, after three, two, three. strange to say because it's slowed down so but we're gonna go we're gonna start off with a d octave and then we're gonna be moving to thirds okay so we're gonna have a d octave so higher up in the harp so in the middle of your harp the higher of the bass d so you're kind of encroaching on the treble clip and that's going to play with the d of your first run so in the middle of that scale so it's going to come with that thumb there so d with the d 
See if we can add that in. So it's going to play with the thumb. Two, three. Again, after three, two, three. Good. Okay, now we're going to move to some thirds. We're going to hop to a D third. We're going to play, then move up one to an E third, and then up again, and we're going to have two F thirds. So D and an F, I'm using my second and my thumb for this D and F, E and G. F and A, which we play twice. Okay, so this is how this is going to work. We have, of course, our D octave at the start. Our D and our F are going to happen when the first one with the F. I guess that's why I'm remembering it because it matches up with the F in the right hand. Got an F in my, in my left hand. Always looking for connections. Two and. And when you hit your E on the way down, we're going to have our E third. So it's going to be sounding syncopated. The first one is going to be and it is going to be pushed, so it comes earlier than you might think. So with the F, E third with the E. Okay, let's see if we can get that going together. Two, three. With the F, with the E. Good. One more time. Actually, we'll do it another twice. I'll give you some more goes with this. Two, three. D with the D. D and F with the F. E third with the E. Good. One more time. Two, three. Good. Now we're on to our D try a bit in our melody. This is going to be when the F third matches up. So that's the top two notes, I guess, of a D triad. It's going to play every time you hit the F. So it'll go with the F, with the F. So it's going to beat two and four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Matches up with the F. Let's try that. Left hand on F and A just now. This is our third phrase. Three, four. Again, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One more time, I'll just count three for this time. Three, four. Good. Let's see if we can match it up with what we have so far. After three, two, three. and rewind and have another go if you need. Two, three. Lovely. Next three bits of left hand are all going to be A octaves. We're going to do a high A octave, then a low A octave, and then a high A octave. So, have a listen to where this fits in. We split this up when we were learning it. Yes, we had F down G, F, D. Remember, we're missing out the E because you played at the end. This is going to happen with the G and with the D. Okay, so it's going one and two and. So with beat one, one. Match it up with the G and with the D. Let's just try those together. Three, four. One and two and. So two A's. One more time. Three, four. One and two and. Good. Our next one is going to happen 
when we're playing up, remember we had C, E, F, A. When we play that E, our, ne our last A is going to come with the E. So with the, with the E. So again, that's going to be kind of offbeat. That's going to come and beat four there of that bar, that measure. See if we can add that in. It's going with the E on the way up. You ready? Three, four. One and two and three and four. Cool. Reset. We'll go again. Three, four. One. Excellent. Okay, so we've got our D octave, our D third, our E third, and our F thirds, which match up with the F of the D triad bit, and three A octaves. Okay, let's see if we can put it all together. See how it goes. Remember, pause, rewind if you need to. After, after three, two, three. D third with the F, E with the E. Slower. Two, three. The F. The F. A octave. A. A again. Cool. Let's play it twice in a row and then afterwards I'm going to go on to the second part which I'll play twice through with the left hand. Join in with the male do that. Okay? Twice through. Two, uh, after three. Two, three. got interrupted I was going to play you on to um, the second part but we never actually got there because the buzzer went um, for delivery okay I'm going to play you the second part now with the left hand that we're about to learn we did manage to get through all of that left hand with the right part there so um, yeah have a listen it changes ever so slightly the second time Part, I should say. Um, the harmony is the same. So we have the same left hand chords for both times through, but the rhythm is slightly different for the last phrase the second time through. So we are starting off with a B octave, going to a C7. Now for the whole of this left hand, I'm really keeping this flat hand technique so that we can do considerate damping. If you've not thought about considerate damping and damping, I am. Um, if you look back on series two, there is a workshop um, and a kind of worksheet that takes you through the technique of damping with the left hand. So, B octave, flat hand damp so that we can get to a C and a B. C7, okay? And remember, that's going to be a C natural there. Okay, so this is going to happen with the first phrase. Have a listen to how it fits in. Okay, so it's syncopated. It's going to come on the one and the two and, okay, the rhythm I use a lot, I'm sure you've worked out. So it matches up, B octave comes with the A, the C7 comes with the D. So that's on that way down. Then you have, thankfully, no left 
chance you can get to grits with that triplet. Let's try it after four, nice and slow. Three, four. to our D triad section. Yeah, you know where you are? Nice and simple here, a D octave split. Okay, low D, we're gonna play the high, the thumb D first and then the lowest D in your heart. That's just gonna go beats one and two. So it'll match up with the first two notes, with the D and with the F. slide up to the G, damp and slide up to the A. Now this is going to be in the same rhythm that we've been using all the time pretty much in this tune. that E we've got all four fingers on there. Let's go for that one more time and then I'm going to add in the E. Three, four. E now with the F, so you've started to come up that four notes, so it comes with the F on the way up the four notes before you come down those five. Okay, so that final A comes with the F. FGA. Three, four. Three, four. D, D. E. Good. Let's do it twice. I'm going to change where I play the FGA the second time round. Okay, so don't play the FGA the second time round. Just keep your ears open. Let's go for it twice, so. Sorry. 
what's happening today. I'll play that again to you. We're changing where we're playing the FGA. Before we had one, two, uh, before we had it uh, on uh, one, one and two and three and four and now we're going to have it on two, three, four. So it's going to go one, two, three, four. One, oh my goodness, I can't count today, Jeremy's. So we will go on one and two and three and four and like that. Okay, let me play it to you though. Like that. <laughs> Not explaining things very well to folks today, sorry about that. So this time, it's going to go with the second F. So the F matches up with the second F. One and two and G with the E, A with the F. First F comes by itself. F with the second F, G octave with the E, and then next note, A with the next note, the F. Cool, let's try it together. Three, four. same harmony but I've just changed the emphasis where it comes the rhythm for the second part just to kind of make it sound a little bit different so let's try all of that second part remember the first time round you go second time it goes straight up okay all of the second part twice through three four look at that again okay so let's go for the whole tune both hands together yeah remember first part was the d octave then you had e your uh, d octave sorry d third with the f with the e's together and then s then a octaves like that yeah hopefully you can remember it when we go for the full thing both hands together at a nice steady pace. After three, two, three. to uh, the fireplace now and we'll play it again and I'm actually going to go in afterwards we're going to go into a tune called Donald Blue which is a reel which works really well in this so this is an extra thing that you have in your sheet music this week and it's uh, an arrangement that comes from my book uh, Mostly Scottish Harp uh, volume one which you can also download from my website um, or purchase in hard copy and um, plenty of boxes of copies of that here in the apartment just now um, so yeah have a go at that and um, have a look at the kind of the crack about Donald Blue actually on your sheet music and um, some good Shetland dialect um, I learned it learned it years ago but this my version comes from um, Tom Anderson's book um, and his descriptions of the tune are in Shetland dialect and it's just it's just wonderful to read so aye let's head over there now <laughs>
that was the real uh, more girl coming going into the tune Donald Blue, which you have in your PDF. It's a wee wee bonus down download. So I this is the kind of blather section. I've actually gone a wee bit different. Normally at the blather section, I have a cup of tea, but I've actually just got some water today. Um, it's very cold in Glasgow. It's below zero just now, and our Glasgow water. If you've ever been in Glasgow and tasted tap water in Glasgow, it is so good. And it gets even better when it's really cold. It's like, it's like proper kind of like iced water. It's it's just really, really tasty. So I'm just enjoying some water today. But I, what have I been up to? Now, of course, now in your PDF, I will put a link to the original recording that I heard of More Grog come in. Um, so you can kind of hear the fiddle player playing. Um, he's tuned down a little bit, so you won't be able to play along with him, unfortunately, because very, um, I think he does a semitone lower, which isn't a really... It doesn't really work on the heart. We don't have the right levers to be able to play the tune in a semitone lower. But um, have a listen to it. It's very fascinating. Um, aye, and it was really great to chat to, to Ross, as I said earlier. Please do check out his album that he made with Ryan, his brother. Um, it's called And Then They Made Tea. So um, yeah, more Shetland dialect for you there. <laughs> it's a great album. Do consider buying it from Bandcamp. Um, he's a great guy, Ross. And Aye, lovely to catch up with him, really was. Um, not really kind of seeing a lot of folk just now because um, things aren't so great here. So it's always nice when you get to see people for a chat on Zoom. So yeah, what have I been up to? Ah, now we are in January just now, towards the end of January and Celtic Connections Festival is on. This obviously is usually an in-person festival, um, but it's gone online like everything. Um, we've been enjoying sitting down every night listening to bands play and um, last night was a cracker actually, Imar, which is my fiance's band we're playing, um, Dreamers Circus, who are a great group from uh, Copenhagen in Denmark or, or Denmark, um, and who else is playing? Kathleen McInnes, who is an amazing Gaelic singer from Uist, in South Uist, and then there was sing singers from Rajasthan in India, and they were positioned, um, they kind of filmed on one of the Indian forts in Jodhpur, um, in the Rifa, um, yeah, in Jodhpur. And at the start of their set, they just filmed from start to finish, at the start of their set, it was dark. And as they went on, the sun started to rise and it was fully daylight by the time they finished. So yeah, quite a feat to time your set for that, I have to say. So it was a wonderful concert. And then we enjoyed um, our pal Paddy Callahan um, every Saturday during Kelly Connections. It's, it's not an official thing, but he's been doing a trad disco. Um, so he does it on Facebook and he just, he sets up the full light, light show in his house and he has his dad on the smoke machine. It's great. He's, he's some boy and it's, it's a place to go if you want to feel happy and everyone chats, chats on the Facebook video and Oh, it's just great. He's some lad, Paddy. So we were up very late last night with that. Um, so yeah, it was good fun. Um, now, I mentioned last week that I've been doing videos for Celtic Connections for the education thing. They are now out. Please do check them out. There's a link in the comments and also in the PDF. Um, I did three videos kind of introducing the Clarsach, kind of doing what I normally do for the festival, but out at schools. Um, when I filmed them, it was before Christmas and they were originally just going to be shown to the classes in schools. But now, of course, everyone's schooling, homeschooling at home. So uh, parents have, and teachers have just been sharing them with their with their kids. So, yeah, it was great fun to take part in that. So do have a look and pass it on to any youngsters who you think might be interested in learning um, about the heart for myself. And yeah, that's good. What else? Um, Oh, um, I told you last series about a new project that I'm involved in, the Scottish Music Academy. So this is another learning opportunity for harp. I'd say it's probably not right yet for you guys. If you've been following harp at home, we've been doing kind of intermediate level stuff, I would say. But my first course for the Scottish Music Academy is called First Tunes on Scottish Harp. So. If you have any friends or colleagues who have just been learning harp and are, have got to grips of the kind of basics, um, if they fancy set, signing up for the Scottish Music Academy, they'll be able to take my course and kind of take you through various tunes 
um, starting quite easy and getting more challenging, introducing different left hand patterns, etc. So yeah, very excited about that. That's just up now. I think there's five videos online so far. There will be more that I have to film yet. That's this week's job, I think, um, going on soon. I will do a second course for them soon. I will let you know when that's out because it might be something that you're all interested in. It's going to be tunes in 20 minutes where I'm only teaching the melody of tunes and it's going to be tunes that are popular tunes. So kind of like session tunes and stuff to encourage you to learn tunes for when we get back to playing sessions that you'll be able to play the melodies as well. And um, I'll teach you good fingering, which will mean that you can flow. Um, so yeah, tunes in 20 minutes, that will come up soon. So I will let you know about that. And yeah, um, tonight there's this premiere, as I said earlier, that it's Burns Night and we are having a Burns Supper in our house. We um, found a local company, Friends of Friends, um, who have are cooking as a Burns meal. Um, so I'm very excited about to have that tonight. Um, normally at this time of year, I'm in Nuremberg. Um, in Germany. I've been going over there for years. Nuremberg is twin city with Glasgow where I live now and every weekend around Burns Day, usually the weekend after the weekend before because everyone's got actual events on Burns Day in Scotland, um, we head out to Germany and we play concerts. We hold a Kaylee and I tell you the Kaylee's amazing. Like sometimes a Kaylee's in Scotland you have to drag folk up onto the floor. It's not, it's can be quite challenging to get folk to dance at some times in Scotland. Um, but oh my goodness, in Germany, in Nuremberg, they are amazing at Kaylee dancing. Like if we take too long to like get ourselves sorted for the next set, they almost start shouting at us because they're like, hurry up, we want more dancing, we want more dancing. So that's normally what we're doing at this time of year. And then we have a big uh, burn supper in the Le Meridian, the big hotel in Nuremberg. And there's a pipe band from Glasgow, Nielsen District Pipe Band, there's Kayleigh Band, myself, a Highland Dancer, Scott Singer, and um, there's usually delegates, kind of folk from Glasgow, usually like the Lord Provost and stuff go out as well. And we've all made real proper long-term, actual real friends in Nuremberg because we go out every year and like genuine friendships and it's just so wonderful to see them every year. So deeply, deeply missing them all just now. Um, so um, I've actually just been recording some tunes for them. We decided to put a wee bit of a video together because we miss them all so much. So I played a couple of solo tunes and then I was doing the whole collaboration thing and um, joining in with some of the Kaylee tunes on the harp, which is good crack. And it's just, yeah, I'm so glad we're doing it for them because they're very special friends over there. and. I think next year will be like the 30th anniversary or something. So my goodness, the party will be something else for that, I have to say. Yeah, like, oh, I'm looking forward to it already, even though it's in a year's time. So yeah, great memories of being in Nuremberg. Um, so aye, that's about it. Can't, I haven't even really thought what I'm doing this week. I think more videos for the Scottish Music Academy, that's my plan. Um, I might have the weekend off next week. I don't know, I don't think I'm teaching. Or maybe I've got, I might have one lesson in the net from the Netherlands. I don't know, I'm kind of starting to, <laughs> like, need to look at my diary. Um, I, I'll get through this week and then see what next weekend brings. Oh, next, next harp at home. I'm not totally sure what's gonna happen. I'm not sure if we're gonna start the harp at home suite next week, or if I teach you a jig that I've got as well that I really wanna teach you. Um, I don't know, I think we'll probably start the harp at home this week. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to be writing that for you all, of course. Started it, but I'm going to finish it. That'll be great. Hopefully, that'll be fine. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah, so a little bit different from now on. We're going to have three sessions or maybe four of the harp at home suite. We'll have a kind of, kind of gentle, satisfying tune. We're going to have a jig. We're going to have an air and then we're going to have a cheeky, cheery tune to finish the suite off. So, aye, good things happen with that. I, I hope you're all well. I've had some messages from folks saying that they're really enjoying the start of this this uh, series. It's always really nice when you message me. It's just, I'm amazed at how many folk around the world in different places are taking part in this. So, 
yeah, all just filmed in this little room in the way stained the Glasgow. Hi. So, I better go on. My tummy is starting to rumble. My dinner is coming. So, yeah, have a good week. Have a good Burns night if you're watching this live on Monday. And see you soon.